Welcome back to Best of the Beach Cocktails. Because every time I come here, you completely school me on cocktails. So I'm originally from Austin, Texas. Uh, I moved to Miami about eight years ago, and you know, I always had a love for bar, love for hospitality, and I really didn't learn anything. I realized later till I came here to the Broken Shaker to work with Gabe and a lot and a bunch of people that were really, really excited about making cocktails and really excited about doing things that not everyone else was doing. So that cocktail, are you gonna be making it? Sure, we'll make, yeah, we'll make it today, absolutely. Right. Yeah. This one's called Pretty Dope. The Broken Shaker just has so many unique and crazy names of their drinks. The Pretty Dope is definitely one of them. An ounce and a half of this uh, uh, Pretty Dope mix. What is it? In that, so this is the most labor intensive syrup I think we've ever made on a large scale. And basically it, it takes uh, roasted corn, roasted jalapenos, cilantro, and a tiny bit of cream. Um, he, he roasts that all together, blends it with simple syrup, and actually the simple syrup is made with the, we initially boil the corn and that boiling water gets used to make the simple syrup. So you get a, a lot of really awesome flavor of roasted corn in there and then the vegetal and the sweet. Can I, can I try that just by itself? Sure, absolutely. I, I feel like that doesn't even need anything else. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's, it's pretty interesting and tasty on its own. Bartenders have so many different unique ingredients to get the right flavor. You can't be afraid to try anything. And this is exactly what Guy and the bartenders at the Broken Shaker live by. I love the color of that. Yeah, no, the color comes out cool. People really like the drink just because, again, it, with for all the really cool different flavors you get, it's still a very easy to enjoy drink. And we garnish it just like he garnishes his elote at the restaurant with uh, fresh cilantro and some thinly sliced radish. And there you go, man. This cocktail is truly out of the world, and right before he made it, Guy was telling me how they're probably never going to make it again, which is a shame for you guys. Um, it uses this... Uh, corn water syrup that has several steps and uh, it just takes hours upon hours to make. So one of the cocktails I always order when I go out to kind of like, not judge the bartender, that's such a harsh word, but kind of see w what their idea of everything is, is a Manhattan. I, I like richer Manhattans, I like like a lot of flavor mm -hmm. and so um, yeah, I mean, why don't I make it and I'll explain it. You think you can make two different ones at the same time? Sure, sure. So you're icing the glasses down. So yeah, we're gonna get these glasses nice here. and chilled, exactly, because you're gonna serve this up and in Miami. The, this, the sooner that thing hits the heat, especially with no ice, the sooner it's gonna be a warm glass of whiskey in your hands. So this is the uh, the Iron Beer Dolan. So how do you make that? Like, what, what is actually going oh, okay. to work? So a we lot have of people this... don't realize that you know a good cocktail happens way before it's actually served. Right. Well. It has the, uh, we have a rapid infuser, which is essentially a machine that puts things into a vacuum, gets them boiling at room temperature because there's basically no pressure in it. So whatever you have inside the bag with that as it's in the machine is, ex I guess I could say, expanding and, and opening up and ready to absorb that stuff. And then it just jams a bunch of pressure back in there and seals the bag. So you get the infusion you would get from like two weeks pretty much as soon as the machine is done. And then if you leave it for two weeks, you're talking about really, really great infusion where you really get the flavor of whatever you're putting in there. Um, so and to that one I'm going to add a little Amaro Montenegro which is like an Italian Amaro once again going with that kind of like raisin and, and uh, depth of flavor for this one. Okay. And we'll use the Rittenhouse 100 proof rye which is what we use in our well and we're really happy to have that one in our well because it's kind of like a very classic choice for, for a Manhattan. Uh, and then we'll use the Abbott's cocktail bitters, which are cool, like um, all spice, really traditional bitters that these guys have started making again after a hundred years of try a little not dab being of made. Yeah, absolutely. Bitters are considered the accent of a cocktail. They really bring everything together, and they're one of the most important ingredients. And then for the other one, let's do. Let's see what else we've got in here. This is taking a risk. This one really hasn't been used very much. This is a granola sweet vermouth, which I mean is pretty much just as the name suggests. It's. Uh, couple granola bars put through the rapid infuser with uh, with a blanc vermouth which is like a still sweet but um, a white vermouth. It uh, takes Nature Valley granola bars and he forms them with you know such an adult beverage and there's kind of this discordance when you take that first sip between being a kid eating those Nature Valley bars and drinking this high-end uh, bourbon with a little bit of sweet vermouth and it's really transcendental. We don't want to add the Campari and make it too bitter but the Aperol has a nice light, less bitter flavor. And this one has been infused with lemongrass. Granola, raisins, not lemongrass? None of these ingredients belong in Manhattan, but I know it's gonna work, 
That's why I love this place. Making a cup of iced coffee, you know, the, the more ice you have, actually, the slower it dilutes, the more you kind of control the dilution. And you make that look so easy. It's kind of like the pat on the head yeah. as you rub your belly. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. when I first knew I should be a bartender. Guy's an expert in uh, everything in the cocktail world. Uh, you can see in just Manhattan, such a traditional cocktail, it usually just has a few ingredients. But with just those few ingredients, you can really make you know, a huge variance in the final product you offer. There's no words that really describe it. Uh, that's actually during Nana's menu. You can just go up to him and be like, I want your take on a Manhattan. And he'll ask you for a little more details and he'll create something right on the spot. I was gonna make you one more drink that, that I think really kind of like goes with, the, again, the memory vibe and the sort of like Miami vibe. And we call it the Shaker Colada Cafecito. Yeah, yeah, every place I've, I've been into Miami, you know, we get people from all over the world and they mm -hmm. do the same thing. They, they want to know what's in the cup. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and it's a community thing. It's, you know, yeah. but it's a little tiny cup and then everyone shares. Everybody it. That's great. shares and so that, so I'm, you just give it a really quick hard shake to get it a little foamy, just like the espresso itself, get it cold. And you don't want to dilute it though, you still want the nice, like, strong coffee taste. There's so much uh, community feel and, and, and cool memories to having it in this cup. And we serve it just like you would get it in the coffee shop. And I'm, I'm, we're gonna share one together because that's the only way I would do it. This drink kept us going through the entire bar crawl and it was really fun, it was almost contagious. Oh man, that's gonna lead to the perfect morning. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's sponsored by the Broken Shaker, you're gonna be blown away by what they have to offer and they will make, whip up whatever they can for you. After this quick break, I'm gonna take you to meet Isaac Grillo at Rapport.